the Philippine Revolution began in 1886 when Spanish authorities discovered Katipunan, an anti-colonial secret organization. The Katipunan, then founded and led by Andres Bonifacio, began to influence much of the Philippines, declaring Spain as weakened empire. Fast forward, in 1898, Spain ceded the country to the United States for $20 million. Now, the Philippines has become a reluctant part of a new empire. Hi, this is Rene with Tarlong Bang My Media. And if you have not subscribed yet, don't forget to do so. Just click the subscribe button and ring the bell. And voila! You will be notified every time I have a new video released for you to watch. And on this video, we are going to talk about the two most significant among the so many great but controversial events happened in the history of the Philippine Revolution. While heading to end an abusive relationship and just few breaths away to finally break out under the weakening power of Spain, Chismis goes around that yet another unwelcome colonizer is coming. And the Marites was the Philippines was sold by Spain to the new colonizer merely to continue whatever Spain left. Of course, we already know by now that our country our native land, our kabahay, kabansa will be under the direct control of the new occupier, the United States. <laughs> the United States. What? What happened to the gap? Di man lang mo na pinagpahinga ating mga superbayan ng bansa sa bakbakan. Ito na naman. Pero na naman tayong kalaban. Oh, come on. How could they? That's, that's human cruelty. If there was such that time, wala pa mga United Nations doon at wala pa yung mga human rights activists that time. And we study that human nature revolts against such cruelty. O diba, totoo naman. Kaya nga nag-revolt ng ating mga magigiting na kapabayan. Dahil sa pambapaboy ng mga dayuhan na yan sa ating bansa. If you are going to equate these two, let's say a relationship, it is called a courtesy gap. You know, when Brad broke up with Jennifer, people didn't know yet that he was with Angelina right away until they announced it publicly. What do I mean? Clearly, they have given the people a courtesy gap before jumping to yet another relationship. Mas maintindihan sila ng mga tao. Well, in all history books, the Philippines unfortunately was not given the same privilege of having the courtesy gap. Kaya kayong mga luko-luko dyan sa pag-ibig at umayos kayo. So, it is clear now why our heroic brothers gave everything and perhaps lost their focus in fighting from one battle to the next against these two abusive superpowers. Because while the wounds of war has yet to heal after Spain, here comes the United States overtaking on her so soon. Talking about getting a little up, too much. 
Now, let's start with our main topic, the Tejeros Convention in 1897. Rosales' execution on December 25, 1896, filled the rebels with new determination. Fast forward. <laughs> the Katipunan was becoming divided between the supporters of the Supremo, Andres Bonifacio, who revealed himself to be an increasingly ineffective leader, according to, well, some detractors from the other faction. And, whoa! The rising star, Pinoy Gatalet Bato, Emilio Aguinaldo, which proved to be an efficient one according to his track records. At the convention held at the Tejeros, the Katipunan's Cavite headquarters, and Aguinaldo's turf. In March 1897, delegates elected Aguinaldo as president and demoted Bonifacio to the post of director of interior. Then there was a commotion among the present in the assembly, then Bonifacio withdrew with his supporters and formed his own government. After fighting broke out between Bonifacio's and Aguinaldo's faction, Bonifacio was arrested, tried for treason, and on May 10, 1897, executed by the order of Aguinaldo. Ayon sa aking bubuit na si Marites, the probability of the election held was questioned on Talino ni Balites, no? With allegation of fraud. <laughs> Many ballots distributed were already <laughs> filled out and that the voters had not done this themselves. <laughs> it's as timely as today's headline. According to some historians, inside the memoirs of Santiago, Alvarez, and Gregoria de Jesus, both allege that many ballots balota, were already filled out before being distributed. And Guillermo Masangkay contested that there were more ballots prepared than voters present. Alvarez writes that Bonifacio had been warned by a Cavite leader, Diego Mojica, of the rigged ballots before the votes were canvassed. But he had done nothing. Let's hear from our sources. Idinetalye kasi dito ni Bonifacio kung paano raw dinaya at binanipula ng mga kakampi ni Emilio Aguinaldo ang Tejeros Convention noong March 22, 1897. Sabi ni Bonifacio sa isang sulat, bago raw ang botohan, narinig niya ang mga usap-usapan ng ilang taga-imus na nagsabing hindi sila dapat pamunuan ng isang hindi taga-Cavite. Tanging si Aguinaldo na isang kabitenyo ang dapat daw mailuklok na Pangulo. He discussed how there were people who were plotting para matanggal siya as the rightful president and the founder of the country. Mula ang mga sulat mula sa estate ni Jacinto, sabi ng Leon Gallery, na authenticate ng mga tunay na sulat nga ito ni Bonifacio dahil sa kanyang pirma. Doon sa liham na to ay um, na, nakatatak na yung pagpapakalang kay Bonifacio bilang pangulo. Uh, may nga lang nagkaroon daw ng hindi pagkakamang pagkaunawa doon sa ibig sabihin ng haring bayan. Ba? Talagang diwa ng katipunan yung gusto ni Andres Bonifacio sa pagkabansa natin. Now let's go on with the number two. The pack of Biak Nabato. On November 18, 1897, well, that's a day after my birthday. No, 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 not that era. <laughs> Several revolutionaries minus uh, Bonifacio, who was executed prior to this convention, convened a citizen assembly, meaning involved ang mga tao. Again, to draft the interim constitution for the Philippines, yung buong Pilipinas na. But I believe everyone have forgotten what happened to the Tejeros Convention, which is a failure when they convened for 
uh, the general public for the uh, the whole Philippines. So I am very confident that nothing would ever be as it was. Never. And so I say, they called it Biak na Bato Constitution. Am I saying Constitution? Yes. They are holding this assembly to ratify the government which was to be governed by a Supreme Council consisting of a president, the vice president, and four secretaries authorized by the said government. However, this plan never see the light of day because Aguinaldo had begun negotiations with the Spanish government. Negotiations with the Spanish government resulted to the Pact of Piak na Pato. On August 9, the Manila lawyer, Pedro Paterno, met with Aguinaldo with a proposal for peace based on reforms and amnesty. In succeeding months, Paterno conducted shuttle diplomacy, acting as an intermediary between De Vera and Aguinaldo. On December 15, 1897, Aguinaldo signed the Pact of Biak na Bato under which Aguinaldo effectively agreed to end hostilities and to dissolve his government in exchange for amnesty and 800,000 pesos indemnity in return for which the revolutionary government would go in exile in Hong Kong. But the pact itself failed tremendously because Filipinos and the Spaniards did not trust each other. Eh, kanina pa ba magmamana ang mga Pinoy? na yan pagdating sa trust. As a result, periodic clashes between the two groups still took place even after Aguinaldo's departure from the country. The Spanish did not pay the remaining balance of the entire agreed amount. Aguinaldo decided to use the money to purchase advance, firearms, and ammunition, and later on to return to the archipelago. Anyare, ano ito? Umbi ubo yan? And the never ending criticism to Aguinaldo, aside from the deaths of the Bonifacio brothers, Antonio Luna, as well as sympathies for the Japanese Empire during their occupation of the Philippines in World War II, did Aguinaldo really sold the revolutionary government? He himself assembled for. 100,000 pesos as a result of his negotiation to Spain so as to end the revolution. Doon sa salitang benta, nakalimutan na natin yung pagiging republika noong constitution niya, yung pagiging kuta ng mga katipunero dyan. No? So bakit mo itatapon na isang bagay ng ganong kahalaga na hindi naman si Aguinaldo lang yan? Para sa amin, ang kinin namin na bahagi yan, ang kasaysayan ng bulaka bahagyan ng pambansang kasaysayan. Unang-una, yung republika maganda. Sapagkat na itatag nila isang republika na malaya. No? Pero sinasabi nga natin, elitist na itong republika nito. Ang masama, yung kanilang pakikipagkasundo sa mga, sa mga Espanyol na uh, tinatanggap ni nila yung reforma na gusto nila. Sa reform ang hinahanap ni Aguinaldo, hindi talagang totally paglaya sa mga Kastila. Kung hindi nangyari yung takot biyak na bato, hindi siguro tayo bansa ngayon. Siguro makakita tayo ng mga lessons doon. Huwag natin ulitin, di ba? Pero nangyari na yan eh. It's a matter of ano lang, giving it the right perspective na huwag natin paglaban-labanin yung mga characters na kasi saan hindi yung dota na magaling si ganito. Ay, ito may superpower si ganito. Ay, ito, di ba? Huwag natin paglaban-labanin ng mga characters na kasi saan. Kasi lahat naman sila may naiambag para sa bayan. I'm not really into fighting less into any war. I'm a lover not a fighter. But as the world has witnessed, the succession of defeats for the Filipino rebels could be attributed to discontent that resulted from the Andres Bonifacio's execution. The succeeding losses in the battles were results to rebels becoming weak when the Bonifacio Aguinaldo leadership fall apart. Well, we'll see you more on the continuing saga of the Philippine Revolution. Up next, entitled the birth of the American Empire. Only here on your information channel. Peace.